All right. So where we left off, we were doing some, some fine uh, erasing of the edges. And with organic source material like this mountain, I can even make up my own edge. And what you see here is using the lasso and using a, just a one pixel feather rather than zero pixel feather. And it works especially good for kind of background edges, right? Just gives you a slight softness to it. The problem with using the magic wand without any feathering is that it will make everything look pretty jagged. And that's not always what you want. And then it'll also leave lots of little debris. And the nice thing to me about using the uh, lasso tool is you just have really, really clear control. Now let's look at some of the other options that are there for you. So you see when I use the lasso tool there and I have the feather, there's a little bit of white there. That's a little annoying. Other tools we have is the magnetic lasso tool. It's on the bottom of the, the lasso tool uh, drawer. And it will kind of find the edge for you <laughs> and kind of plot anchors. It tends to simplify and soften. But if you're really, really shaky, you can certainly try that. It uses contrast to do it. Right now that's set at a two pixel feather. So that means I can actually delete twice and it will keep softening as it goes. But I can also set it to a one pixel feather or to a zero pixel feather. But notice it, it's a little bit more generic and you have to close the loop before you can erase. So that works. A tool that a lot of people like, it's with the magic wand tool, it's called the quick selection tool. And this has gotten better in Photoshop over time. But the idea is that you just kind of roughly swirl around the stuff you wanna select and it will automatically find it for you. And like I said, it's gotten a lot better and so you can definitely try it, but the risks are higher of leaving little bits of debris. So you'll always want to kind of zoom in and then go back in with your lasso because you see the little uh, traces it left. See them clearly there. And, and though you don't see them easily on the screen, uh, when you print it, you will definitely see all these little artifacts, little digital noise that's left behind. And that's not what you want. So these little uh, white borders left behind, that's actually why I, I don't usually use the quick selection tool. Because it just takes too long to clean up. But you can see it's quite fast in what it does. Okay, so I'm almost done cleaning off this mountain. Another way to go about it, in fact, let me go back in my history to before I use the quick selection. Another way to go about it is to start with the levels and color adjustment and try to make this sky that's already behind my mountain a little bit closer to the sky that I'm gonna use so that when I erase it, it's not so bright. And so I do that by going to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. And what I'm going to do is limit the highlights, right? And notice that doesn't change my mountain all that much, but it definitely changes the sky because that's where most of the highlights are. And then I can play with the midtones and even brighten those up a little bit or darken them. And I can even limit the shadows a little bit so that mountain isn't quite so dark. Because I don't want to turn any of this to black. I want to keep all of this subtle pixel variation that's in there because it is there but it can be easily erased and then i can go to color balance which is the only color tool we've used so far and i can push it a little bit towards the cools and make it kind of match the background a little bit of course it's it's also interesting if the color changes as the landscape comes forward So I'm okay with having a little bit more warmth than the sky behind. So then whatever tools you ultimately use, I'm gonna use a one, 
pixel just direct um, lasso tool and try to always cut on the inside of the mountain. Take it out by chunks. This gives you a, a fair amount of control. And some things are obviously easier to cut out than others. If this was like a rose bush with a lot of little empty voids between each leaf, that's where the magic wand would come in handier, especially if there was empty sky behind it. This will get you mindful of the artifacts. Now I'm zoomed in about as far as I ever want to zoom in. Um, I'm zoomed in, it will show you in the bottom left-hand corner of the Photoshop window, I'm zoomed in at 200%. So I'm looking at it beyond 100%. Now, if I zoom in much more than that, like 400%, then I'm just wasting a lot of time because the eye is not gonna pick up those variations. Anything I, I can see at 400% that I can't see at 200% doesn't really matter. This is just the, the background of my composition. Now, why am I using the lasso? Why am I, I not using the eraser tool? It's because this is a relatively easy thing to select and kind of draw from. And I don't need to be that careful. But if I'm going around individual like palm fronds or tightly detailed branches or something, then the direct eraser tool would give me more control. It would just take longer. And if I'm feeling brave and I'm getting kind of antsy and bored and know that I can just kind of redraw it anyway, I can zoom out even beyond 100%. <laughs> just take this out and then zoom back in, make sure it doesn't look too awful. The, the one, um, the one pixel feather helps to transition it and kind of cover little artifacts a little bit better. And because it's feathering, it's actually softening at the pixel edge. So if I hit delete multiple times, it will keep eating away at it, you know, one pixel at a time. And that's pretty handy too. So I'll show you that. Here I hit delete once and it takes it out. And then if I hit delete again, it takes it out one more pixel range. And then again, one more just biting away at that background. And again, to show you the magic wand with contiguous 32, there's no option for feathering that, right? So without the feather, it looks a little bit sharper. So how can you feather a, a magic wand selection? Or how can you feather after the fact? It's all in the tool options. So whether I got this with the magic wand or with the lasso, you'll see this option here at the top. With any selection tool, it's called select and mask. And we're gonna use this in very limited ways. We're not gonna create layer masks, but what we're gonna do is feather the selections, right? So any selection after the fact, you can do select and mask and you can set the feather. I have it set at 1.6 pixels. I shift the edge about 10% and I, I make the radius about five pixels. And these are my standard settings. And I set it to remember those settings. So then I say, okay, and it's gonna automatically take what was a rough edge and just soften it a little bit. So that's called select and mask. Let's see. The other reason I like using the magic wand, or I'm sorry, the lasso, as opposed to the eraser, 
with the tablet is that the lasso isn't pressure sensitive, right? You're just drawing a division between pixels. And then the feather helps to soften that. And you can do it one chunk at a time. And it takes fewer history states, so it's easier on your memory than just a lot of individual eraser strokes. So the one, the one pixel feather seems to be working well for this mountain. And I can feather it by decimal points too. So I could try a 0.5 feather as I move closer into the foreground to get better results. Let's do it chunk by chunk. Delete, delete, delete. Don't want any of those little traces of blue artifact. Because my new composited sky is not blue. And I'm going to go outside of the edge of my, that's why I have the guide, the edge of my composition. So if I ever want to just shift it a little bit, I still have that ability. All right, I've got my mountain. Now notice I have to be aware of that hard edge and this hard edge, it either needs to get softened or covered up. Right, so I'm going to save. And before I move on, the next thing, I'm going to show you the other color adjustment that we sometimes use. So we've used levels for lighting, we've used color balance to shift the temperature of the color. But what if I really want a dramatic color change? Because this is a fantasy landscape after all. Well, the other color adjustment image adjustment is called hue saturation. And for this, I can really increase the intensity of color of this mountain. I still want it to be believable, but I can really bring out those reds, right? And I can actually change the spectrum of the color as well. But the more I change it, the more kind of one note it's going to become, right? So this is one we use kind of sparingly, but I'll, I'll often kind of push it one way or the other. And then you can also just broadly darken those colors or lighten them, which is another, it's a lighting adjustment, but it's built into hue saturation. And then I can hit OK and then toggle with Command Z and see if I like that or not. And in this case, I don't think I like it, but maybe in, in a future layer I will. Okay, so I save it. I'm gonna mark that layer is done. And now I've got the pain in the ass cut out of all those little palm bushes, right? But luckily the sky is pretty empty. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna use the magic wand, and because there's lots of what are called undercuts, like little blue patches, I am going to uncheck contiguous. So it's going to select the blue everywhere, but notice it also selects it in the water, right? And then I can hold down shift and add to that selection. So any selection you have, if you want to add to it, you hold down shift. You get a little plus sign. I'm going to add that light, lighter blue to it as well. And now you see it's getting all the undercuts. Everything's there. The problem is if I hit delete, it will also delete it from the water. All these little highlights. I don't want that and the guy's suit and all that. But I do want it to be deleted from the sky. So now that I have the selection, what I can do is change to the eraser tool. So this is using selection as kind of a stencil. And because I am now using a tool, just like you can move selections between layers, you can have selections active between different tools. Because I have it selected, that's the only thing that will erase. So I'm going to use a pretty bold eraser, pretty big, pretty hard, at 100% opacity, and I'm just going to erase, right? Right at the edge of that sky. But I'm not hitting delete, and that way I'm saving all the stuff in here. Giving myself a pretty bold erase right at the tree line. Getting all those undercuts anywhere the sky is peeking through. I now want my mountain and my new sky to peek through. 